Hypertensive disorders in pregnancy are among the four major reasons why women lose their lives while giving life. According to the American Heart Association, hypertensive disorders in pregnancy are implicated in over 50,000 women's deaths every year. Hypertension in pregnancy affects about 3 to 7% of pregnant women globally. In the United States, about 8 to 10% of all pregnancies are complicated with some form of hypertension, with severe preeclampsia and chronic hypertension showing a steady temporal increase over the last four decades. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention in its 2019 report, hypertensive disorders in pregnancy are the leading cause of pregnancy-related death in the United States. The common characteristic for hy or hypertensive disorders in pregnancy is hypertension or high blood pressure. Hypertension or high blood pressure is defined here as any blood pressure greater than 140 for the systolic blood pressure and above 90 for the diastolic blood pressure on two occasions at least four to six hours apart. Severe hypertension is when the systolic blood pressure is greater than 160 and or the diastolic blood pressure is above 110. Hypertensive crisis is when the systolic blood pressure is above 180 and the diastolic blood pressure is greater than 120. Hypertensive crisis is also a severe hypertension and follow the same treatment protocols, though it has a high probability of complications. Remember now in previous videos on hypertension, we mentioned that the American Heart Association and the American Obstetric and Gynecology work with slightly different numbers to define hypertension. We recommend you to watch videos on hypertension on this channel for more information. Thank you. A classification recommended by the U.S. National High Blood Pressure Education Program on high blood pressure in pregnancy uses four categories of hypertensive disorders in pregnancy, which are 1. Chronic hypertension, 2. Gestational hypertension, 3. Preeclampsia and eclampsia, 4. Preeclampsia superimposed on chronic hypertension. Chronic hypertension it is when hypertension has been well diagnosed before the pregnancy or diagnosed in pregnancy before a gestational age of 20 weeks. Gestational hypertension formerly called pregnancy-induced hypertension is the development of a new onset of hypertension in pregnancy after 20 weeks gestation. A chronic hypertension diagnosed for the first time after 20 weeks of gestation will also be considered as gestational hypertension. Preclampsia is when after 20 weeks gestation you have hypertension and protein in urine, also called proteinuria. Severe preclampsia, also called preclampsia plus, is when preclampsia is followed by one or multiple signs and symptoms of severity, also called severe features, which are blood vision, dizziness, headaches, vomiting, abdominal pain in the right upper quadrant or epigastric pain, significant swelling of the body, too much proteins in urine, two plus and above on dipstick, abnormal liver and kidney organs functions, any bleeding in a patient with preeclampsia is also a sign of severity. Though severe hypertension in pregnancy, which is also an emergency, can exist without preeclampsia. Preeclampsia plus severe hypertension is also severe preeclampsia. Signs of severity in the features are slow fetal growth or fetal growth restriction, for chronic and acute fetal distress, impaired fetal biophysical profile. These conditions are caused by poor blood supply through the placenta to the baby. The fetus receives less oxygen and fewer nutrients that than required. This affects the development and the overall fit fitness of the fetus. Major complications of preeclampsia are intrauterine fetal demise, HELP syndrome, stroke, and eclampsia. 
He claims here is when there is onset of one or more convulsions in a woman with preeclampsia in the absence of any other neurological or metabolic disease. It can appear during pregnancy, delivery, and after childbirth. It's an extreme obstetrical emergency affecting 5 in 10,000 women with a maternal mortality rate of 2% and fetal mortality rate of up to 30%. The Greek word eclampsia means lightning. The condition was first described by Hippocrates in the 5th century before common era. But the word eclampsia was coined by Verandes in a 1619 treatise of gynecology. Eclamptic seizures is a grand mal seizure, tonicoclonic seizure, which may cause an abrupt loss of consciousness at once followed by stiffness of the muscles of the arms, legs, back, and chest. During the tonic phase, the mother may begin to appear blue or cyanotic. This presentation lasts for about one minute, after which the mother for an additional one to two minutes. Other signs of eclipse of include tongue biting, frothy or bloody sputum coming out from the mouth. Risk factors for preeclampsia and eclampsia are maternal and pregnancy related. Maternal risk factors are obesity, mothers under 20 years or over 40 years, past history of diabetes, hypertension, particularly gestational hypertension, and renal disease. Chronic hypertension, having donated a kidney is also a risk factor. Autoimmune diseases such as SLE and antiphospholipid syndrome are also risk factors. Pregnancy related risk factors are multiple gestation such as twin gestation or triplet gestation and so on. Placental abnormalities are also risk factors. Other risk factors are the family history. A family history of preeclampsia is also a risk factor. The dangerous partner theory states that women pregnant by a partner who previously fathered a woman with preeclampsia or eclampsia is highly at risk to develop the disease. Many studies are currently being done to determine the paternal contribution factors in the occurrence of preeclampsia and eclampsia. Other studies mention that, however, it was important that more awareness should be raised about hypertension in pregnancy. In some knowledge, attitude, and practicing studies, it was found that nurses, midwives, and doctors are not being informed their patients about the risk early enough. So many patients remained unaware until they developed complications. In many countries, the five factors that most prevent women from seeking help early enough are poverty, distance to facilities, inadequate services, cultural belief and practices, and lack of information. I'm Dr. Eric. This channel is aimed to deliver information that promotes health and holistic wellness, as well as lifestyle safety tips. All the information provided on this channel is tell for comprehensive health educational purposes. Wow. If not subscribed yet, remember to subscribe now and hit the notification clock. Do not forget to like, comment and share our videos with friends. Thank you for watching this video. Mechanism on how hypertensive disorders in pregnancy and their complications occur, the prevention and management at different stages will be discussed in our next videos. See you soon.